It's time for another developer fundamentals video. I think you know what that means. How's it going, Jean? Whoa, not bad, partner. Follow me, I'll cover you. The best developers are the ones who can solve problems where there aren't clear answers. As an instructor, I'm not always going to be there to help you code along and show you how to follow along and build projects. Your skill is going to be valuable since you can solve problems that others can't. Every company you work for, every project that you do, there's going to be a unique problem where there isn't a clear solution or an answer. Your job as a developer and a programmer is to solve these problems using the tools that you have. Now, we've talked about this idea of a rubber duck, rubber ducking. That is, when you encounter a bug or a problem, you pretend like you have a duck in front of you, or you can even physically buy a rubber duck, and walk through your code. Try to rationalize in your head, hey, how come this code isn't working? Where is the bug? What is my code doing line by line? And this should be your first step in trying to figure out a problem. And I encourage you that this is always your first step. It's not to go and ask for help and ask somebody, hey, what's the answer? Instead, talk it through yourself. But there are times where you actually need help. You need to maybe find out some information that you might not know. In this case, what I recommend is Stack Overflow. Now, we've talked about Googling and I've kept mentioning how anytime you don't understand something or you don't know something, you should Google. But most of the time when you're Googling a programming question, one of the top few answers are probably going to be Stack Overflow answers. Now, Stack Overflow is a website for programmers to ask questions and get answers from people all over the world. And it's really, really good. This is a website that you're gonna get familiar with as you start to learn things like JavaScript. Up until now, we've learned HTML and CSS, and you'll find some Stack Overflow answers about HTML, CSS issues. But most often, as we start learning JavaScript, our first real programming language, you're going to love this website because it's going to have a lot of things that will help you along your journey. So in the next section, as we start to delve into JavaScript, remember that you can always Google things. You can always check out Stack Overflow to try and help with your problems. For example, let's say I have a question and mind you, we haven't talked about JavaScript yet. So just bear with me because this is the process you wanna follow. Let's say you want to check if a string contains substring in JavaScript. Now, this might be gibberish because you don't know what a string is. We haven't really learned JavaScript, but I want to just prepare you for the next section because you're trying to solve this problem. You see over here, as soon as I searched that the first thing that comes up is Stack Overflow. Again, if I click on this, I get somebody who asked a question. I wanna maybe find out how many exclamation marks are in a piece of text. And they ask this question. Well, you can actually find over here some of the top answers based on that question. So you can see here that there's three answers and this one, this top one, I like ranking by votes. I can do it by active, by oldest, by votes. But by ranking by votes, I can see what is the top answer. And you also see a check mark here. A check mark means that the person who asked the question found this solution helpful as the best answer. So I like looking at the numbers of upvotes and the check mark. Now, as I scroll through here, I see that, oh yeah, looks like in JavaScript, I can use this includes to check if a string contains exclamation marks. But I also like scrolling down to perhaps the next answer and seeing if this other answer provides a different solution. 
Sometimes the top voted answer won't have the check mark. Instead, it'll be the second one because perhaps a newer version of the answer or there's more of an updated answer that might help as well. The other part I like looking at is who answered this question. For example, you can see over here that this question was answered by this person. And Stack Overflow actually awards you with different badges and scores to those who are very helpful. So when you find somebody that has a lot of these badges and points, well, they're usually reputable. And there are actually a lot of companies that look at Stack Overflow and see if you've been active on Stack Overflow as a way to see the quality of the developer you are. A lot of people who answer on Stack Overflow tend to be really senior programmers. So it's always good to check who this question is answered by. But most of the time, they're usually good, especially if they're getting upvotes. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can check out. There's linked, that is, questions that are related to this one. Maybe this one didn't answer it, so you can check it out over here or any other related questions that you may have. And here's the truth. Most programmers go into a job, go into a project without having a clear path to how to produce an outcome. Most of the time, we're trying to figure it out. That's what people pay us for. Not to have all the answers, but instead to help guide along the way, figure out solutions to problems. So if you don't know something, that doesn't mean you're a bad programmer. A good programmer simply has a problem that they don't know the answer to, and they try to solve it, whether it's through rubber ducking, whether it's through Googling, and maybe using Stack Overflow. But let's say none of these methods worked. What can you do next? Well, we have something really special just for this community of students taking the course. We have a large community of developers just like you. Some have graduated from my courses and now they're working full time and some are just starting. But we have quite a lot of students. We have star mentors. We have alumni who have actually finished the courses. And we also have members. So you can see over here that we have about 2000 members active online right now. So this doesn't even include the people who are offline. And you have different abilities to ask questions. For example, you can chat in the general channel. You can ask questions to alumni. You can look at developer resources that people share. But most likely, if you go to the coding section, you can ask JavaScript questions, CSS questions, HTML sections. We have all these sections and channels for you to use to try and get help. We even have a dedicated Help Me section to ask questions and help each other out. So there's all these resources available to you. Remember, the first step is to try and figure out for yourself. Google, try different things. If you're really stuck, then hop on to the Discord channel and see if, if you can get some help. And by the way, one of the best ways to learn is to actually help others as well. So if you ever get a time, hang around in the Help Me channel or the General channel and see if you can help out because you now know enough to be able to help others as well. And if there's one advice that I can give you is that the best way to retain information is to teach others. I'll see you in the next one.